This gentleman is in the intensive care unit, currently intubated, mechanically ventilated with respiratory failure. He requires a tracheostomy as a bridge to weaning. First, his neck is prepped and draped using sterile technique, following which we landmark out the neck, including palpation of the thyroid cartilage and palpation of the cricoid cartilage. This image shows the superficial anatomy of the anterior neck in preparation for either a cricothyroidotomy or a tracheostomy. The thyroid cartilage is easily palpable and is the most prominent structure in the anterior midline of the neck. Just below this is the soft spot or the cricothyroid membrane, which is where we would typically perform a cricothyroidotomy. The thickened cartilage below the cricothyroid membrane is the cricoid cartilage. We would typically aim to perform a tracheostomy half to one centimeter below this and aim to have our incision in the trachea be between the second and third tracheal rings. It is important to note that the trachea, as it descends into the chest, typically angles somewhat posteriorly. The area of danger is to be below the fourth tracheal ring, which increases the incidence of tracheate nominary fistula. The bronchoscope is used to position the endotracheal tube in the upper airway. We then pick an area one centimeter below the cricoid cartilage and infiltrate this with local anesthetic solution. You can see the light transilluminating through the upper airway. A seeker needle is actually placed through the skin and into the upper airway between the second and third tracheal rings. We then make a small one centimeter skin incision, one centimeter below the cricoid cartilage. The Griggs dilator is then used to bluntly dissect through the subcutaneous tissue into the pretracheal space. A 14 gauge needle is then inserted between the second and third tracheal rings into trachea, taking care not to puncture the tracheosophageal membrane. Positioning is confirmed with the bronchoscope. A guide wire is inserted through the cathlon, followed by an initial dilator. followed by insertion of the Griggs dilator, which we insert laterally and then rotate 90 degrees. The tissue is spread using a two-handed spreading technique to open up the trachea. We then insert the tracheostomy tube along the guide wire into the upper airway between the second and third tracheal rings. The introducer and wire are removed and positioning is confirmed with the bronchoscope. The cuff is inflated. Once positioning is confirmed with the bronchoscope, we then mechanically ventilate them through the tracheostomy. The tracheostomy tube is treated with a drain gauze dressing followed by tracheostomy ties. We do not routinely suture in the percutaneous tracheostomy. The entire procedure should take approximately three minutes.